So let's move forward, still continuing on this, um, a bit on the geometric operations, but putting it inside kind of this very classical GIS problem of uh, having to join attributes from different sources and kind of a bit pre-processing or generating your own, own layers. Uh, in this case, it kind of relates to the ongoing COVID situation. Um, in the springtime, when things started evolving also here in Finland in March, Helsingin Sanomat shared this uh, updated uh, COVID data. And I also had a look at it and then was trying to see that, okay, so where can I find these Finnish health district polygons? So the Sairaan Hoitopiirit in Finnish um, as a shapefile or whatever. And I didn't, at least I didn't quickly find them from anywhere. So of course this health district is an attribute of a municipality and this information exists in different sources. Uh, and then also these districts, they are sometimes redefined. So one municipality might then belong to another district after, uh, if you look at data from, from many years ago. Uh, so might be that now uh, there is a source for easily downloading, downloading a shapefile or geojson of the Sairaanhoitopiirit, but I think still this is an excellent case for a little GIS tutorial using Python to automate the process of uh, joining data and then modifying geometries uh, for, for a specific analysis purpose. And so in this tutorial, we will combine information from municipality polygons that are, are available from Statistics Finland, uh, Open Data Web Feature Service, and then a list of healthcare districts from uh, a Finnish municipality authority, Kuntaliitto. So that's at least the latest, latest information that I found in spring uh, about the healthcare districts. These, this information also exists at Statistics Finland, but they also have this. Um, so if you're able to download it from there, from their API, that's great. But still, I think this is a nice, nice example of how we need to pre-process the data in order to join the data in order then to actually create the polygons we want. Okay, so let's move to this create health district polygons uh, notebook in here uh, and see, see what we have. So the process of dissolving, so we will have the municipalities labeled with the health district information and then create new ge geometries for each district. And that is a simple process, but often in cases like this, the most work goes into preparing the uh, input layers. Mm. Uh, for the table join. So our starting point is the municipality polygons from Statistics Finland web feature service. You can see um, documentation in here, mostly in Finnish. Apologies for that. But I have then uh, hopefully translated most of the useful things in this Jupyter notebook. And from this uh, web feature service, you can get the latest statistical uh, units for municipalities using this tilastointi alueet kunta uh, referring to this this feature uh, and i have the url readily uh, written in here and if you want to check for alternative if you would want to get the uh, what what are they greater regions maakunnat or other other spatial units you can check this get capabilities uh, uh, request from the from the feature ser service to find out uh, what 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 else uh, what other layers are available but we in practice we make a request to the web feature service asking for these uh, municipality polygons and with such a url using geopandas 
we can uh, directly get the data um, using GPD uh, read file URL. As simple as that. Here, the most difficult part is to formulate the correct query, but here I have now um, compiled that uh, readily. Uh, Geopandas, oops, not Geopandas, but geodata.head. Uh, so as long as the URL is correct and the service is available, we can get the data uh, online. Again, in Finnish, uh, but you have the name of each municipality in here. So each row is one of the 310 Finnish municipalities. And then we have the geometric column uh, column in there. So a nice quiz uh, detail to know that there are 310 municipalities in Finland, at least. I think this is now, yes, 2020 data. So the most recent layer. Mm. And to save us some time, I have here ready this renaming uh, function to rename this municipality code that we will use as a key to join information about the health districts in there. Mm. So we do the renaming and then we continue with the useful columns. So we want information of the municipality and then the geometry column uh, in the following steps. So this is nicely organized, clean uh, spatial data about Finnish municipalities. Up to date, we have the municipality code, municipality name, and so on. We can still plot it. So geodata plot to have a look. And there is Finland um, and all the municipalities in there. Mm. And furthermore, for the next phase, so let's double check the data types. So for the table join, uh, we are interested in this code column. And based on this, we can tell that it is, these are character strings. So we need to take that into account when we then read the attributes that we want to join to these municipalities. That was very clear and easy, but then comes the fun part which is often the most laborious part of so-called GIS analysis. So pre-processing a bit messy Excel spreadsheet from uh, a public provider. So I have downloaded from this uh, municipality authority an Excel spreadsheet containing information of the uh, health district related to each Finnish municipality. Uh, in 2020. Mm, and you can then, if you want, it's actually a good idea to download the data and uh, open it in your own computer. I could actually quickly quickly show it just a second. I'll share, reshare my screen in a bit. Mm, codes. Because notebooks lesson for data. So you can see that the file uh, file type is XLS, which is even an old format of Excel files. But this is not uncommon for when you're getting data from, for example, municipalities. They might come in various uh, various file formats. I'm now resharing my screen in a bit. So you should now see Microsoft Excel open uh, and this this file. So and it has multiple spreadsheets. So if you get data in such format, which is indeed not uncommon, uh, you might want to uh, then have a look at it, of course, first. And often it might be a good idea to then take the spreadsheet you want to read in using Python and save it as a CSV file to make sure that there's, you could even like remove these metadata information that might be in there 
empty columns. You, sometimes the header might be spanning multiple lines. So all these little manual thing, things you need to do. So we are interested in this spreadsheet, uh, Kunnat SHP 2020 Järg, which in English means municipalities, health district, um, Health, healthcare district. So this SHP doesn't refer to shapefile. It is short for sairaanhoitopiirit by coincidence and in alphabetical order. Mm, so to me, this is quite well structured to be read in using Python, but there's something. So the three first lines, so 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, we don't need. So the header is located at index 3. And then after the header, there is still one empty row before the data array starts. But otherwise, it is quite nicely organized. There's nothing funny. And I think there's no empty, empty rows at the end. But this is the data we are working with. So one approach indeed would be to save it as a CSV file and continue from there. So manually pre-process it. But here we will actually do all the pre-processing in Python. There is a benefit of like if there's a standard file format from a public provider. So this is their Excel template. So then if you automate each pre-processing step using Python, you might save. Save then time if you get an updated file. So then you can avoid doing all the manual steps uh, for the new new file. Uh, okay. I reshare the web page which is in here. Okay, so back to the notebook. Mm. E yes, so there is then one additional complication now that we have decided to read in an Excel spreadsheet. A bit off topic from the lesson, but I think this is rather useful. For example, if you are using some Excel data in your final project, so it is possible to read in Excel files using uh, GeoPandas, but for that you need to have an additional uh, Python package installed. And as I kind of improvised this part of the lesson this morning, I didn't have time to update the environment, but we can do it now. So you should copy this command from here and then go to uh, the terminal window you can also do this on your own computer. Uh, and then basically paste the command. So we will now modify the Conda environment in our cloud computers. I might be able to update it later this week so that we have this uh, package that reads Excel mm, readily available. But now though, for those following the lesson, you should run this uh, line of code Let's hope everything goes as I planned. So you should be able to install this um, after, after a little while. And then you press Y key, and then it shouldn't take too much time. For some reason, the chat window keeps disappearing. So I am trying to make it visible in here. So I wait a little bit so that you have time to do that. Open terminal window, run this conda install command. Uh, on the cloud computer, you should be able to update it there. Please flag um, the participants list or the chat if you're having problems. I once more pasted the conda command in there. Okay. I'm assuming that went well. Mm, and if not, feel free to just follow. So now we can now we can proceed. Mm. 
And how it goes uh, reading in Excel spreadsheets is that we, well, we make a variable for the data, then PD read Excel. This is in no way any kind of recommendation for data scientists, but sometimes a useful thing to build your pipeline so that it starts from the data that you receive. Mm. Oops. And then we have uh, in this function, we pass uh, the name of the file. So you can copy it from here as the first parameter as a character string located in the data folder. And to be safe, you can put the little, little r. So do copy paste the file name from here to avoid typos. Uh, and then there's an additional parameter sheet name for the sheet, which you can see it contains a space and scandix, which is also not recommended to have in a file. But I think we are still able to read it um, using pandas. And as we observed, we need to uh, skip the first three rows. We will do it so that we tell that header is located on index three. Mm -hmm. And then what's in there? No, she. Aha, uh -huh. there's even a dot at the end. Okay. Mm. So now I again wait a bit. If you're if you're having trouble reading in the file, please let me know. So space, scandix, and a dot. Three things not recommended in any kind of file name are in the sheet name, but we are able to read it uh, read it in there. I get a thumbs up from Brian, silence from others, but I hope, <laughs> hope things are going well. Uh, yes, good, thank you. So I, I now proceed. That was maybe the most difficult part in this, in this, um, uh, this tutorial to get the data, data into Python. So we have it in there. We have these weird Finnish uh, column names, and we still have this. After the header, there was this empty line. So let's get rid of that using data dot drop na, uh, and then in place true, which updates the variable. Mm. Not to make things too easy, so our nice Excel spreadsheet is also missing some of the Finnish municipalities. So 16 municipalities located in Åland are missing from this uh, Sairan Hoitopir, so the health district polygon data. They all belong to Åland uh, district, so we can add that information later. Moving on, I have code ready to rename this so that everybody can follow. So this Kunta new line Kodi refers to the municipality code. And then this health district uh, polygon uh, information in, is in Sairan Hoitopiri column. So we rename the columns and continue with the useful information, which should be now uh, accessible for everybody who speaks English. So on each row, we have a municipality with municipality code and healthcare district data. So I'm spending time on this now because something like this is very likely that you need to, for example, do in the final assignment or in your master's thesis or whenever merging non-spatial data and spatial data using Python. So it's a very useful thing to automate these things that you would normally do manually. So renaming columns and everything. So in case you get updated input data, you know how you have actually pre-processed the file uh, and you can then, if needed, repeat the steps automatically for data with similar structure. Mm. But then we have this code. Uh, it is the municipality code that matches 
the one that we had in the Statistics Finland data, but not to make it too easy, we have floating point data instead of character string data. So we can't yet uh, make a space uh, attribute join based on those unmatching data types. So I hope you still have some energy. We might, might take a break after after this step and then then continue after the break mm, but let's let's complete this part so our goal is to make this column comparable with these codes so you might be able to do it in excel but here we are now uh, automating that process in python so to give you an example the co municipality code on the first line is 20 uh, as a floating point value. So think about how would you convert that one variable as a character string that starts with a zero. So it's a bit different process if you are uh, doing this using single variables in Python and then when we will implement the process in pandas or geopandas but it's important to at least think about how would you you have a floating point value how can you make create something like this out of it as a character string well uh, it starts with a zero so let's put it in there we have a zero and then we have the number but this won't work because you cannot concatenate a character string and a number like this we should uh, convert it as a character string pretty close but we we still want to get rid of this digit because it won't match with this zero to zero so you can do uh, an integer conversion also in there. So that's how I would solve this problem of uh, converting a floating point value to a three digit number with zero. But then of course, what if we have municipality code that already has, we have these numbers that are for example, 992. So then we don't want to add the zero uh, in there. So let's do so. I will now show how I would uh, solve this issue using pandas and then we will have a break. And during the break, I hope you stretch your legs and then try to understand the next uh, syntax and we can we can still uh, discuss it after the break. But now then how to automate this kind of thing for each row in pandas and take into account the varying number of digits in there. So if a two digit number add one zero, if one digit number add two zeros before it, so it could be zero, zero, one, for example. And if there are already these three digits, don't add anything. And to do that, uh, I would first, first start by uh, converting everything into a character string in this code column mm, as type in so we first want to kind of truncate remove the zeros from the end so this will return me these uh, municipality codes without the uh, decimal points and then those i can uh, convert to character strings so the same thing, but these are now character strings. But that, yeah, that is not yet enough to uh, use as a common key in a table join. Uh, so we will, for each row, do uh, a trick where we, on the fly, mm, use this lambda function that I mentioned last week. So in this lambda function, 
uh, the x will be one value from this column uh, one at a time. So you can think of x uh, for this row, it's 20. For that row, it's 5, and so on and so forth. And the process will be mm, then, for example, with this 1, 0 uh, plus x. So the same thing as in here, I take 0 to the start and then add the character string number to that. And I do that only if length of the uh, character string uh, is 2. So if I have this two-digit number, mm, then, I, then I have that. And in all other cases, I use the original value. Okay. And then I want to replace the values and then it should work. So now using this syntax, I'm able to modify the rows which have two digits. I have two other cases which are if I have only like, for example, number five, I want to add two zeros. So then I modify this code so that if length of the character string is one, then I add two uh, zeros. And then the third case, let's see, I think I need to do this in the other order. With me. So before the break, we were uh, working with the healthcare district data so that we could eventually join it with the municipality layers. And my problem before having the break was that I didn't actually store the results anywhere. So I was running this line of code, but it just calculates the results and doesn't store it anywhere. I do so that I first update the values of the code column as character strings. Then I deal with the case of uh, having one digit in the input, adding two zeros to the front. Then I deal with the case of having two digits, adding one zero, zero to the front. And in other cases, uh, the original three digit municipality code is, uh, remains in the code column. And somebody shared in the chat a nice one-liner, which then combines these two. So if length is two, uh, do something. If length is two, do something else. If length is one and then else, uh, the original one. So with these Lambda functions, um, if it gets super complicated, it might be difficult to then read afterwards. But adding one if else in here is, is actually a good idea. So this uh, code then. Um, handles this case of Finnish municipalities that have max three digits in the code in there. So please, if you have some questions about this, I'm happy to answer. I got myself a cup of hot chocolate, so I should have my full focus back on. If not, let's continue. And I hope that this example enlightens you a bit more about the Lambda function and how it can be uh, used to do these tiny modifications on the fly. Now we are finally ready to join the data. So we have spent some time modifying the data from the Excel to be compatible with our uh, municipality layers. So here we do this uh, using pandas merge uh, function. So let's update geodata um, by merging uh, the data. So the health district polygons based on uh, code. So both of the layers have a column called code, which have this matching key. And, and, and now uh, that we join data from the Excel data in a way to this geodata frame, the output will have, we want in the output all the municipalities in the geodata frame. And in order to have those, we want to do a left join. So this left uh, argument then tells pandas to take all the rows from here, check, 
matching records from data and then uh, leave no data for the rest of the municipalities in the geodata frame. Geodata. Dead. So now we have, um, so when we have a common key, it will only appear once in the output. We have the name of the municipality, the geometry, and then for each municipality, we have the health district uh, polygon information. Excellent. We're not yet done to make this actually properly. We uh, want to take into account Ahvenanmaa. Uh, let's see how long this takes, but we don't want to uh, exclude Ahvenanmaa from our uh, Åland from the health district analysis. Uh, so this looks good, but as we have these 300 municipalities, we already know that those from Åland uh, don't have a matching record in the data, Excel spreadsheet data, for some reason. Uh, so to check those, you can do um, geodata dot, well, let's actually do it like this, geodata uh, health, oops, health care districts um, so to check rows that are missing data there are different ways but here we can approach it for example like this that we call check the column and check uh, check the values well we could do is null but I'll not do the same same as in the lesson materials. So all of all of the rows that have information in healthcare districts uh, will have true, and those that are false will be the ones uh, that don't have have data. Uh, so it's a bit of a I don't know. Maybe we could actually do is null improvising again. Mm. So now this uh, Panda series should have information of those uh, rows that are lacking the healthcare district information, I hope. And if we want to then select those data, we can uh, pass this true and false uh, array in there. So I have the geodata brackets and then this kind of mask, true and false mask. So as output, you can also just check the names. Uh, I have there are 16, uh, 16 municipalities from Ahvenanmaa, Åland Island in Finland that were not included in this Excel three sheet. But we know that all of those belong to the Åland or Ahvenanmaa healthcare district. So we can then, for those rows, update the health district information. How? Uh, geodata. We want to locate uh, all of those rows uh, where this um, healthcare district information is lacking. So this uh, geodata column name dot is null. So we get all of those rows that are lacking the information column healthcare district. Mm. If you run that, you should see only no data values according to the rule here. And then if we want to update those values, it, this is a bit similar that you did in GeoPython final exercise perhaps. Uh, so then we just assign ma. Uh, which is Finnish for Åland. You can write in Åland in there if you want. So then we update the values. Excellent. Uh, and you can only run this once because after that there won't be any no data values. And then finally, uh, you can check. I copy paste from here, geodata, healthcare district column, value counts 
Uh, so using this syntax, we have then updated those 16, poly, uh, 16 municipalities to belong to Ahvenanmaa, according to the health district information. Give you a bit of time to fill that in while I'm searching for my missing chat box. Okay, so this syntax is now a bit different that I have on the website. I will update the website according to this syntax after the lesson because this is more, more logical to detect the no data rows as true. And for those rows, we update the values. So uh, finally, we are uh, ready to return to the topic of today's lesson, which is dissolving and modifying geometries. Mm, but it is often typical that most of the time is spent preparing the data for the actual analysis, as we have now been doing for quite some time. Mm, so we can call it districts to make it shorter. Uh, then we have this geodata dissolve by oops now we want to dissolve by shorter hmm, column name might be handier so we want to this uh, dissolve by healthcare districts end of uh, function as an output Let's see what we get. So healthcare district in the index uh, geometry, the original municipality code, or actually this is probably the first, first municipality code. So these two columns are actually not super useful as we only have these healthcare districts. And then when we uh, dissolved or aggregated the data, then this is probably the first in the list, the first municipality that uh, belongs to this healthcare district. If we would have had population information in each polygon, we could have added an argument in here to sum up the uh, integer values or the numerical values in each polygon to actually get the sum of population in each district. But that I now cut out from this tutorial in the interest of time. Uh, what is useful is that we could reset the index. So districts reset index and in place who will update the values on the fly. And what this does is that um, we reset the index from zero upwards and then uh, the old index that was a result of the dissolve operation becomes a column. So then if we would save the data to a CSV file or so, we have this column column with that information. And further, furthermore, we actually might want to drop. Let's do this um, district to make it proper only to include now the useful useful columns um, geometry because these code and name are kind of nonsense nonsense in terms of their content there we go uh, we can do a quick very quick visualization um, Plot. And if we want to plot distinct values for the different um, districts, we once more need to type in this long column name. I just copied from there. You might want to do the same. Uh, let's see what we get now. I think there might be still, still some of these um, polygons that are plotted with the same 
same color, this is now a nice bridge to our next topic, which is plotting thematic maps. So I can adjust this that I want. I know that there are, is it 20 uh, based on the index that I updated? If I now print this district, so there are 20 districts, uh, or actually, is it then 21, including Ahvenanmaa? So from 0 to 20. Uh, so if I do an e equal interval uh, visualization um, with 20 values, I should then uh, get unique value for each district. So now we have, of course, we could have originally just visualize the municipalities based on the healthcare district information. That's one way to create the map. But now we have these actual polygons for the healthcare districts based on the municipality geometries that we could then use for further spatial overlay analysis. All right. So yeah, this tutorial, it was maybe a bit longer than I anticipated, but I hope it was useful and also it might uh, motivate or uh, wake up your creativity in terms of the final exercise. So for example, something like this, you could then enrich with further data, further analysis steps might be a good starting point for your final, final analysis where you have to automate some, some kind of uh, data analysis and spatial data analysis workflow. So finally, we can we can write the write the data to file. Um, let's just do this first one or districts to file uh, FP1 driver geo JSON. And sometimes with data that has the scandix, you might want to need to specify the encoding of the data in order to get the characters uh, written correctly to the file. So like this, uh, we have managed to reach our goal, which was to create uh, these health district polygons based on the municipality information after having joined uh, the attributes from this. A bit, well, not so messy, but a bit tricky Excel file uh, from the Finnish Municipality Authority. And I leave this last part as homework. You, you could then, of course, reproject the data to VGS84 for other purposes um, and then save it, save it to a file. So by default, this, uh, this data is, as we already checked, probably did we check these tricks? ERS. So it is in this EPSG 3068 uh, projection. Excellent. So that was it. Mm, with this tutorial, uh, wrapping, wrapping up this uh, geometric operations part, still to elaborate, you could imagine doing something same if you happen not to have a layer of the continents of the world, you could then, based on attribute information, dissolve country borders into continents, or if you need some sub-regional data, if you have the attributes but not the shapes, you can dissolve existing geometries into larger entities using GeoPandas, as we did in here for the uh, healthcare district.